Welcome to Benson Polytechnic High School, Portland Public School's largest modernization project. Uh, it will be 385,000 square feet over 10 different buildings. We have active construction site, everything from going vertical to steel to finish paint inside this existing building. So we're running a full gamut of lots of construction activities. One of my favorite features in this building is something that nobody has seen for a hundred years and unfortunately won't see for another hundred years. You can see here these steel beams and girders. This is all hand riveted back in the 1920s. When we're done, this will all get covered up. Back in the early part of the century, this is 1929 auditorium uh, here at Benson High School. One of the things that they did do, some of the students that were very ingenuitive would get into these little spaces and they would crawl over. And what you can see right there is they signed the concrete. So you have a student in 1952 I'll paint your name on so Part of the historic renovation was to keep portions of the walls around the perimeter of the entire facility. Here you can see we've kept that on what we call Building H. These walls were part of a much larger building. What we've done here is we've kept these walls up standing all through demolition and through construction and integrated them into part of the design of the existing building that will remain. I'll show you here, you can see on the angle, we have what's called dead men that are holding up parts of the existing historical wall and the structural steel that has been added to it to keep it in place and seismically anchored. And you can see here how it integrates into the new construction design. So originally the school 1916, 17, and 18. In 1917, they built the north wing and the foundry. In 1918, they built the south wing, and the south wing was scheduled to open. But in 1918, they had a Spanish pandemic flu. The army and the government claimed this building as an infirmary for the Oregon and Portland metro region for the Spanish pandemic flu. So literally the school opened on a pandemic and two years ago when we started this renovation, we closed it on a pandemic. One of the things that's really challenging about this project is phasing the work. Uh, typical construction, we're you know, excavating, doing some underground, pouring some foundations, and then working our way up there you know, with, new, um, with new structure, then doing rough-in, uh, and finishing the project from there. This, the retrofits in, uh, on this project, in a lot of ways, start out almost backwards. A lot of the steel has to be installed before the foundations can be installed. Uh, once the steel has been installed, then we're able to shore up the building, dig the new foundations, and start going vertical from there. That's been a challenge both uh, with the constructability, but also just the logistics of the site. Trying to make sure that we have clear access uh, and safe access for everybody to get to their work while we're still trying to do this retrofit at the same time. Um, and we've got 10 buildings on site, which to me is one of the, the largest challenges of this project as a whole is working on all 10 buildings that are in a varying stage of construction all at the same time. It's very, very rare that we're actively doing finishes and painting in one building while we're still doing demo abatement and excavation in another. And we've been doing that continuously throughout the campus, kind of working in a clockwise direction between the renovated buildings and the new buildings for about 18 months now. And so it's been a challenge, but it's also this really great opportunity for a lot of our younger uh, uh, tradespeople uh, to see different aspects of construction that they normally wouldn't be exposed to. Um, the folks that are normally doing the demolition and abatement aren't there when finishes are going in, and vice versa. Um, the folks that are doing the MEP rough-in 
typically aren't there when we're doing foundation work. And so it's been a really great process for everybody to put eyes on not only what their work, what their craft affects going, um, going forward, and what other trades it's affected by, uh, but also vice versa. Not only seeing what happens after their work is completed that they normally wouldn't see, but also the work that uh, needs to occur prior to their trade uh, being involved in the project. And again, on a typical uh, ground up construction project, you wouldn't see that. So that's been a really great opportunity uh, for our team, but as a whole for the entire project, uh, for the you know all of the young tradespeople that we have on this project, 100 plus on any given day, uh, folks learning new things, seeing new things, and being a part of a project that just isn't typical. This gym, uh, the center section is a URM building. The exterior portions of it are reinforced concrete. And so part of the uh, rehabilitation and retrofit of this project is to restore the exterior, restore all the windows uh, and reinstall them in place, and then also do the seismic retrofit from the ground up and connect these two concrete boxes into this URM building that makes up the core of this building that we're now tying together with a new diaphragm, new strong backs, new foundations throughout, and then a new mass plywood diaphragm on the roof that'll tie all of the lateral and vertical reinforcement together. PPS has a very rich history with how their schools are built. And um, I was lucky enough to be on the Grant High School build and come over here to Benson. And the gym that was there was built in 1923. This gym was built in 1925. And the things that you see is once you took the floor off and the topping slab off, right where Armand is stepping here, there's a bunch of footprints. And those footprints are from that era. Those footprints are from the crews walking the deck while the wet concrete's still there. And it just has this historical value to it. And just, just this grand uh, gymnasium with the track going around it is just amazing. Uh, the historical value to keep those things and to have a rich history of workers working in 1925-26 with uh, concrete and having the legacy uh, still here.